This is one of the most talk about main battle tank which uses the modular spaced armor. We will be examining the result and effects when a projectile is fired on it. Here is the interior and workings of the tank, along with the crews inside it and how they operate as a team to fire at a target using the hunter-killer engagement capabilities. We will also look at the parts and specification of the tank, along with the basic step-by-step -step process of how it works, and most importantly, how to drive the tank. To remain unbiased, we should also talk about the pros and cons of this tank. So, stay tuned, and don't miss a beat. This Leopard tank is a result of Germany engineering at its best. There was a saying, that if the Germans engineers had been able to mass produce these Tiger tanks and Panzer tanks in 1939, Germany would have won the war. Entering service in 1979, the Leopard II was one of the first Western composite armored tanks to see service. It was originally a joint program with the American M1 Abrams after the failure of the joint MBT-70 program between West Germany and America. Well, enough history lesson, let's get straight to the video. The Leopard 2 was the first version of the tank, while Leopard 2A4 was the most common version of the tank with around 3,500 produced till today. This is the Leopard Evolution developed for the Singapore Army, around 150 or more were produced. Moving ahead is the Indonesian Army Leopard Revolution. Around 61 main battle tanks were developed. It is also referred as Leopard 2A4 Evolution which introduced wedge-shaped spaced add-on armor to the turret front and the frontal area of the sides. The frontal heavy third of the side skirts were replaced with a new, stronger type. Let's remove this frontal armor here as well as this turret cover. Stripping all the covers reveals the Leopard 2A4 inside it. This is very common in military engineering where tanks are refitted with upgrades and some improvements in the main armor composition. This is the Leopard 2A6, which includes the addition of the Rhine metal 120mm, 55 smoothbore gun, and a number of other changes. One of the major exterior differences is the gun. Let us compare this to the older models to understand its gun size. Now let us look at the specification before understanding into how this tank works. This tank has a length of 10.97 meters or 35 feet with gun forward. While it has a width of 3.76 meters or 12.3 feet, slightly bigger than the older models. It has a height of 3.03 meters or 9.94 feet, while its older version is lesser in height. Let's compare this to a person to understand its size. Even more better, let's compare this to this Russian T-90 main battle tank. As you can see, the Russian tank has a lower profile than the German's tanks, as well as the American Abram tanks. It has a crew of four, a commander sitting almost at the top center. To the left sits the gunner just below the commander. Moving to the extreme right is the loader, and the last crew member is the driver, which is at the front of the tank. With all these additions, the Leopard 2 has a combat weight of around 59.9 tons and could add a maximum mass of 61.7 tons. Let us start from the front. Inside this section is the left ammunition storage rack just besides the driver. As stated, this is a 120mm smooth bore gun developed by Ray Metal. This is the main armament of the Leopard tank. It is fitted with a thermal sleeve, fume extractor, and a muzzle reference system. The Leopard 2 typically uses two main types of ammunition. This is the high explosive anti tank multi purpose round with tracer. This is how it works when fired. The round reaches the target. It detonates creating a molten metal of hypersonic jet to destroy or penetrate the armor. Another round is the armor-piercing, thin-stabilized, discarding stabat. When fired, the armor-piercing, thin-stabilized, discarding stabat round leaves, discards the protective shells, and the fins gives it a rotational spin. It could penetrate around 450 millimeters of rolled homogeneous armor equivalency at 2,000 meters or 1.2 miles range. Just besides main artillery gun is this 7.62 mm machine gun. It has a range of around 1200 meter. While the other one is positioned on top of the roof usually used by the loader. Let's look inside this modular add-ons. The strategy of this armor is that if 
An armor-piercing fin stabilized discarding round hits the tank. It will disturb the round flight orientation by this first layer of spaced armor and minimize the impact on the second layer of spaced armor. The result is that this round will shatter rather than penetrate the whole armor. Interestingly, this not only protects the tank, but also reduces the weight, making the tank more mobile and agile. Reports suggest that a reactive armor could also be placed on top of them to improve protection. Let's move to the top of the tank. This is the EMES-15 telescope, usually used by the gunner to target the enemy. Moving to the back is the commander periscope. This is the commander independent panoramic sight, giving him a 360 degree field of view. It is a stabilized glass optical periscope for day and night reconnaissance over long distances. The periscope consists of a third generation Attica thermal imaging device. Let's see how this works. Step number one. The Leopard has a hunter-killer engagement capability. The commander uses a panoramic sight with thermal imager to search for targets. Once the target is selected, the gun is laid on the target automatically. Step number two, loader loads the desired shell as ordered by the commander. Step number three, so once the tank commander got to the right neighborhood, the gunner could actually get directly on target with better sights. Make sure that wendage and elevation were factored and then take the shot. The gunner completes all the aiming and firing process. During that time, Commander looks for the next target. Let us move to the back of the tank. These are the radiator of the engine. This tank is powered by an MTU MB873501 turbocharged diesel engine, developing 1500 horsepower. All that power is being powered by these internal fuel tanks, carrying around 1,200 liters or 317 US gallons. This gives the tank an operational range of 340 kilometers or 210 miles, with a maximum speed of 68 kilometers per hour or 42 miles per hour. Let's look at how the driver turns from inside the tank. The driver turned it by altering the speed of the right or left gears just close to the engine. To turn to the left, the driver turns the steering to the left just at the animation here. This increase of speed on the right track helps turn the tank to the left. To turn to the right, driver turns the steering to the right. This increase of speed on the left track helps turn the tank to the right. Again, this video will not be possible without discussing the pros and cons. Pros. The Leopard 2 A6 has a powerful 120 mm swoopper gun and can fire a variety of ammunition types, including armor piercing, high explosive, and smoke rounds. High level of protection. The tank is heavily armored with space armor, providing excellent protection against various threats, including anti-tank weapons and improvised explosive devices. Good mobility. The Leopard 2 A6 has a top speed of around 68 kilometers per hour or 42 miles per hour and good cross-country mobility, allowing it to operate in a wide range of environments. High cost. The Leopard 2 A6 is a very expensive tank at $7 million to produce and maintain, with a high per unit cost that makes it difficult for many countries to afford comparing it to the T90 tank. It costs around $4.5 million. Heavyweight. The tank weighs around 62 tons, which can limit its deployment options and make it more difficult to transport. Limited crew situational awareness. The tank crew has limited situational awareness due to the tank's design, which can make it more difficult to identify and engage targets in certain situations. While the Leopard tank is heavily armored, it is still vulnerable to advanced anti-tank weapons, such as the Lancet drones, which can also have a top angle of attack. We try to make every video from scratch in Blender 3D animation. So please do us a solid and subscribe to help us produce more video like these, unbiased and original content.